It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. So folks, she entertain you every uh, morning uh, on WILK uh, radio. Uh, Sue Henry, uh, for 16 years, she was there on WILK and you had a great time with her. She's my guest today on the Sam LaSant Show. But remember folks, Remember, you can download our show if you have a smart TV, download YouTube, search SSP TV, and watch all of the shows. Now, you should have cable, but if you don't, if you have people who have satellite, have them do YouTube. And of course, our app, search SSP TV, and you can watch all of our shows. And when you go there, they're all local produced shows. Sue, nice to have you on the Sam LaSan Show. Thank you for having me, Sam. I appreciate it. Um, you know, you, you, I, I would, when I would get the opportunity, because I've been on the way to work, always listen to you on, on uh, radio, always respect you, as well as I respect, you know, all the other people that are on, in the media, because I know what it is to be a talk show host, okay? I'm still learning, okay? I'm trying. But a little bit about you, Sue. I mean, before we get into some of your, your thoughts, because you certainly heard a lot in 16 years, okay? Uh, a little bit about your history. Well, Sam, I grew up in Fleetville in Lackawanna County, and I always listened to the radio with my parents when I was a kid. I loved radio. I thought it was really magical. I had a little tape recorder. My brother and I used to tape things, and we used to have a lot of fun. And I realized that it would be a good career, perhaps. So when I decided on what I wanted to do with my life, I wanted to go to King's College to be on their radio station. And my father said, no, you're gonna go to Temple like your brother. And I fought and I, I fought him. And eventually we went to King's and I saw my radio station. When I was at King's, they said to me, do you wanna see the gymnasium? I said, no, the radio station. And they said, you're the first person that didn't wanna see the gym. So as soon as I saw that radio station, Sam, I knew I wanted to be on it. I knew I wanted to be a part of it. When I was at King's, I started on WRKC almost immediately. Yeah. And eventually I became the first female station manager of WRKC. So I put a little dent in the glass ceiling at that time. <laughs> yes, you did. You know, it's interesting because I started off in radio uh, when I was in high school, WTHT here in, in Hazleton. And, uh, but why, why not TV? Other than radio. People watch TV. Uh, radio. <laughs> well, well, thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I see you have many platforms for it. Yeah. I just felt more comfortable behind the microphone than in front of the you camera. Do you feel you have more liberty when you're in, on radio than you do on television? I mean, I think you do. Yeah. I absolutely do think. Yeah. It seems more free. It seems yeah. less restrictive. Yeah. And you have a little bit of anonymity. Yeah. A little bit until yeah. you open your mouth and then that's all over. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. true. But, you know, when you're, when you're in radio, when I remember, I did a, a, a radio music show. But if you, if you wanted to stand up or if you had frustrations and if people told you, you, you make all kind of, but here, television, you can't. So you, so what happened then, you, did you go right into radio after you graduated? Well, I didn't even graduate and oh. I went into radio because my father told me that I should start working in radio if I wanted to go into it. So I did. Mm -hmm. it, when I was a first year student at King's, I was hired by WWDL in Scranton. So yeah. I went home every weekend and I worked the overnight shift. Mm -hmm. Did you ever work those shifts in radio midnight no. to six? No, no. Uh, I had never been awake for a full night at that point, and then I had a job where I had to stay awake all night. So I did that job at WWE. Was that a talk show? Mm -mm. I was oh, just play, the overnight play, person. Play I was a DJ. Oh, I did news, weather. And then I wanted to be closer to school. So in 1985, I applied at WILK, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. And it took them a while to agree that I should work there. And so subsequently, later on in 1985, I started to work at WILK the first time around. Now that was for, in talk show or was a DJ? No, I was a DJ then, but it was interesting. I used to do the Million Dollar Weekend where they played the oldies, but at night they ran talk. They had TalkNet with Sally Jesse Raphael, yes. Bruce Williams, yeah, yeah. and then overnight they ran the Dean of Talk Radio Larry King. Yeah. So I was actually absorbing talk radio since I was in my 20s. I never planned to do it, but at least I got to hear it and I understood it 
from hearing it, and I used to love, I used to chuckle at some of the stuff that went on, and yeah. I found it fascinating. There's a real bond between talk radio hosts and listeners, and I got that from listening to talk radio. So I worked at WILK through 1993, and then I was hired by the Citizens Voice of Wilkesbury, and I worked there for nine years. I was a reporter, I was a columnist, I was the assistant features editor. I could lay out almost the entire newspaper by the time I finished there, except the sports agate. And then I wrote about radio as a columnist. And I got to know a lot of people in the business, uh, mostly in management. And I used to talk to a guy named John Burkavich because he was the general manager of WILK and the other stations in the building. And they called me. Um, after Fred Williams had left, they had another guy that didn't work out, and they called me and they said, could you come up to the building? And I said, sure, why not? And I thought they had a story for me, so I drove up there and they said, we'd like you to try out to be a talk radio host. And I was kind of floored by all this, Sam, because, you know, I do have a big mouth, but that's a lot of talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's three hours a day. Yeah. So I said, I'll... I'll think about it. And then they call me back and they said, you have to audition. We can't just give you the job. You have to come in and audition. What was the audition like? <laughs> nerve wracking. Yeah. It was absolutely nerve wracking because you don't know. Will people call? Are you going to be on your own? You don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be um, August 16th, the day that Elvis Presley had died many years earlier. So I had that as kind of a little bit of a topic. So you auditioned on air? I did. Oh, it wasn't like an audition before no. you went on air? No, they oh. had a couple of people come in and they, we, I guess we all tried out. Yeah. And uh, John Burkavich held up a little sign in the window that said I was hired, <laughs> which was pretty gratifying. Mm -hmm. And so I went home and I talked to my family about it. I had a union newspaper job, mm -hmm. union. And this was talk radio, and the, my family said, you're going to get fired. And I said, why do you say that? They said, because all talk show hosts get fired. And I said, just because of that, Sam, I wanted that job so bad. And so I took it. And then when I took it in 2002, I thought I made the worst mistake of my entire life. Why is that, so? It's such a hard format. Uh -huh. There is no talk uh, show University. You don't go to Larry King U out in Las Vegas to yeah. learn to be a talk show host. Yeah. You have to get a real sense for what's happening. And three hours a day of talking requires a lot of preparation. Oh, yeah. You have to be ready for uh, whether people call or not. Sometimes you go in there with a topic. You've probably experienced this too, and you think, this is a great topic. Everybody will will respond. Nobody responds. Drives you crazy. You're just sweating. You're sweating. Yeah. So for about the first three months that I went, mm -hmm. I thought, oh my gosh, this is so terrible. And then I kind of got into a groove with it and I understood it a little bit better. And they talked to me about, you have to have strong opinions. You just can't go in there mm -hmm. and be wishy-washy. So I tried to develop a, a stronger opinion, um, thicker skin, all kinds of stuff, because at first, it just didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, it began to work for me a lot what better. What was the turning point when you said we had to go to strong opinions? What, what was that strong opinion area? What was the turning point? Well, I had come from a newspaper background. I was a reporter for a newspaper for a long time. And when you're a reporter, you're not supposed to have strong opinions. So I always felt that I should get. Well, you should tell that to New York Times, but go well, ahead. Well, I digress. This was a long time ago, yeah, okay, you know, yeah, when yeah. maybe it was yeah. a little bit different. Yeah. But um, then I had to think about, well, where do I want to stand on these things? And what do I want to stand for? And why? how forceful can I be with people without being obnoxious or perceived as arrogant? And there's all fine lines here. You know that, though, right? Yeah, but that's interesting. So what was the first time that you, what was the first strong opinion that you did, if you recall, that got the phones ringing? I think when, when I started, Sam, I really stood up for uh, George Bush. And he was perceived in the time as kind of just, not the person you should stand up for, even where we live. You know, there are a lot of people who are hardcore Democrats. Oh, and yeah. George Bush, yeah. you know, in the aftermath of 9-11 and, mm -hmm. and whatnot, I think that he was perceived 
poorly a lot by people, and I took a strong stance for him. I took stances for you know going into Iraq, and I took war support stance. And a lot of times people didn't like that because you know there was so much controversy about the weapons of mass destruction and why are we in this war? Is this a war for oil only and and whatnot? So that was hard because a lot of people really dig in, and I think we're almost in the same environment today. You said something that we talked about before we did the show, and before I go to break, you said he was perceived. Now, when someone's perceived, it's because you read and hear things about that person. The point is, before you are, and that's why you see the heavy commercials and po around politics, okay? Mm -hmm. They're trying to brainwash you. So when you say perceived, okay, if I don't know you, and then all of a sudden I start, someone starts advertising and start talking about you, then I start getting a perception, all right? And I asked you before, and I'll, I want to talk a little bit about, did you see the movie Chappaquiddick? Okay. I did. All right. And folks, well, I'm talking to Sue Henry. A lot of experience uh, in the talk show business. Remember, when she's talking and she's giving an opinion, you start developing some things, and so you start getting perceptions. But are those perceptions really true? And what about the so-called fake news stuff that we have? People say, yeah, you say it's fake news because it's not what you like. No, it really is fake news. And if you watch the movie, if you see them, have seen the movie, Chapter Critic, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back up this break. Show, folks, remember 24-7 SSPTV.com. Watch all of our shows. Download if you have YouTube, download YouTube, search SSPTV, watch all of our shows, including our news, and don't forget our app, SSPTV. Reason I say the app is all local shows, okay? My guest, Sue Henry, you remember her. She was on for 16 years, WILK talk radio show host, and did extremely well. Sue, we talked about, you said about when you start doing the strong opinion about, uh, you know, you were a George Bush, but then you said he was perceived. And I think what we're having today, okay, <clears throat> we have the staunch Democrats, we have staunch Republicans. I don't like that. I hate that word staunch because I like to have people who are open-minded. I'm a conservative. However, I will listen to a, a you know, a, a liberal, etc. Now, when you, when you look at perception, and uh, I, when I interviewed people who are running for Congress, etc., I apologize to them because I'm in the media. And I'll tell you why. It's a disgrace what we're seeing today. You see today uh, a lot of deception, and I ask you if you saw the movie Chappie Critic, and I, I tell people to look at this movie, you will see the epitome of what propaganda was all about with Chappie Critic. How they had the paper in their back hands, how the politicians, you know, and what they're, and I see that today. I see it in the senatorial race that's running in the state of Pennsylvania. I see the gubernatorial race. I see all of that stuff where they're trying to now give you all the propaganda without talking about facts. What's your opinion on that? Well, I think in the world that we live in, it's so overwhelming, Sam. I think there are so many sources of material that you can go to as an individual to read or watch or whatnot. But I do believe that there is a very strong agenda that's, that's being driven. And I think it's the strongest I've ever seen it in my entire life, where you watch news at night and <laughs> as a viewer you 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 yourself are sitting there going are are you kidding me this this is supposed to be news this is supposed to be facts this is supposed to be reporting for the record for historical perspective and it's tilted it's slanted and therefore i think sam a lot of people are shying away from traditional media i think that a lot of people are doing their own fact-finding, as it were, and, and they're trying to ascertain what's real and, and what's not real. So how much, how many times do you have to lose viewers? Uh, and I look at CNN and MSNBC, and I see the ratings. The last month, Fox blowing them away, okay? And here again, when you're presenting all this nonsense and all, this, all these lies and deceptions because they don't like Trump for whatever reason, okay, People are turning them off. There are more people who are sympathetic to Trump than are to, to the news media today because they find them in fact that they're lying to the public. I was watching with my wife the, um, the, the, the wedding with uh, Prince Henry. Or, uh, Harry. Harry, I'm sorry. And there's David, and I, I respect David, there's David Muir, okay. 
And any time he had the opportunity of slamming, uh, uh, not, not slamming, but showing where Obamas were more important than Trump was, he would make sure he would reiterate that. So he's coming from the same stock that ABC has, the liberal content. And, you know, if they say one good thing about Trump, and I'm not, you, you'll see it. You'll see another thing about 16 things about why that's wrong. I don't even, that's why I don't watch the late shows anymore, you know, Colbert and, and, and these, you know, Kim. I mean, it's just an agenda. Now, maybe I'm nuts. Well, I, I think that you're on board with a lot of other people, but I believe a lot of these shows are doing it at their own peril. When Johnny Carson was on television, he made fun of everybody. Exactly. He was a master exactly. of just playing it across the right. board. Exactly. But I believe even some of these entities are realizing that you cannot be antagonistic at all points. Isn't it true that even SNL is looking at some of the uh, political humor that they're doing? Isn't it true that they may be reconsidering some of it? The people are not stupid and they know what's going I believe the people know what's going on and I think there <laughs> Do is really? yes I think there's a simmering frustration so you think that's why the propaganda starts now when you see the uh, you know when you see uh, you know you said something that I tell our viewers do your homework. Just mm -hmm. do your homework. You know, you talk about Senator Casey, and I'm not picking on Bob Casey. He's a nice person, and it comes from a great family. Sucks as a U.S. senator, okay? And now I'm beginning to see, this is my opinion, I'm beginning to see the propaganda, okay, about minors. What he voted against, he voted for, uh, he supported Hillary. He wanted to put those minors out of business, okay? You see Wolf coming But at out. least they'd have their health care. Oh, they'd have health care, exactly. But they wanted, he wanted to destroy that. But so if you, and if you, you talk about pro-life, if you look at his record, what he did for Planned Parenthood. So I'm saying the propaganda starts, Sue, okay? And you don't mind if it's factual, okay? But I just see all of this stuff that's happening. Not that I want you to think the way I think, by no means. I like, I was a debater at King's College, okay? I enjoyed Great it. school. Oh, it's the best, okay? okay. Now, but there's, we, we're blessed with a lot of good colleges in this area, we really are. But I, I'm saying as, as a talk show host then, you get these people calling because there's, my mother changed, she switched to be a Republican when she was 87 years old, so. You know why? She read the Democrat platform. And if you read that platform, she said, how could I in God's name be a Catholic and, and, and be a Democrat in what they believe in? Okay, it was like unbelievable. Did you run across any, uh, you did, stupid <laughs> question. When you encountered those hot debates, how did you, when they call you, say, you're nuts who, and you know, you. Uh, well, if they call me and they say I'm nuts, Sam, <laughs> they've already lost the debate. That yeah. is a terrible debating point. Yeah. And it, just d trying to degrade people in their character. <laughs> yeah is absolutely the wrong way to debate. The way to win debates is with facts. Facts that speak for themselves. Facts that are presented in a logical manner. And once someone starts calling you crazy, then they've lost the debate. So it's just using I, 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 logic I, yes. and good information. Sue, I'm with you 100%. And when, you, when I said about checking Casey's record, they're facts, however, if I held this up and said to you, what color is this? Not the, you'd say it's white, okay? You ever talk to a, a wacko liberal? Even though this is a fact, Sue, even though I'm telling you this is a white sheet of paper, a liberal, a wacko liberal, I call them, will say, oh, well, it's, it could be a little bit gray. It probably was black, but now it's blue, and now it's right. So they don't appreciate the facts. But that's, that, again, that's self-revealing behavior. Any person with their head screwed on straight will look at that paper and say, you know what, that paper is white. I don't know what this guy's talking about. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, again, keeping perspective, not losing your temper, not losing your cool, and just debating issues on their merits using, may I say it again, facts? Yeah. Well, it's, 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 the senior citizens I feel so sorry for. Because they get, they get fooled and, you know, they tell, people are telling them how to vote and, you know, they think they're stupid. Do you think radio is, is fading in, in, in the country? Do Absolutely you, not. Yeah. No, radio is with us in, just like you have all the platforms yeah. where your show is seen, radio has this, the same amount of platforms and people do rely on it. And local radio is very important because 
satellite radio does not tell you there's going to be a snowstorm yeah. and it doesn't tell you that there's problems on 81 local radio is still very important to people yeah. well you know we've been very fortunate because when I say people to download an app if you you see all the local shows it's like talking to you getting information out okay folks I'm talking to Sue Henry uh, I love this show because I'm able to talk to a talk show host um, and she was with WLK for 16 years we'll be back right after this Back to the Sam LaSanne Show. Folks, remember 24-7 SSPTV.com. Download our app, SSPTV. And don't forget YouTube. Download YouTube. Search SSPTV. Watch all of our programs. My guest, Sue Henry, talk show host for 16 years on WILK. So people ask me, Sam, what was the most interesting interview you did? Now, I've done thousands of interviews with Jack Palance, and then we came to do the shows or on the road with Sammy Lane and... You know, I don't know even how many shows Sam LaSanne shows have. Now, I'm going to ask you a stupid question, okay? What was the most, what are the, <laughs> what are the most interesting interviews that you had on, on radio, okay, that you, you know, you could remember? That I could remember? Yeah. Well, I'm just like you, Sam. I've interviewed a lot of different people. And when they come into your building, they can see all your pictures of the uh, multitude of people that you did interview. Um, it's hard for me to say. I, I don't want to slight anybody. Uh, I had a lot of very enjoyable interviews that, that I did throughout the course of my career. Um, I got to interview John McCain when he was running for president. That's stressful oh, because yes. you get that really short window yeah. and it's so hard to make sure that you don't blow it when you're doing stuff like that. But I think it came out okay. Um, I've interviewed... Um, Carl Bernstein, that was fun. He did not like my questions, and I interviewed him in person up at an event at a, at a university locally. But it was fun because he's a he's a, a journalistic icon, and when you're trying to interview journalists, it's sometimes mm -hmm. difficult. You know what I'm saying? Um, recently, I interviewed Milo Yiannopoulos, who is a, was with the Breitbart organization for a long time, and he creates all kinds of chaos and trouble wherever he goes. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes like those kind of interviews because they, you don't know what's going to happen. And when you're interviewing people, that's one of my favorite things that happens is that it could go in any direction. Live radio is very good for that. Tom Jones, oh. yeah, I asked Tom Jones if any woman had ever tried to pick him up on the telephone and he said no. And I said, well, you're about to be picked up by a woman on the telephone. <laughs> I love him, the you know Welsh love God. He was great. Um, so many other people. It's been so much fun. When you're when you're looking at the public and they're trying to you know get an opinion, being a nice guy is being a nice guy. But when you have to do something for either government or a doctor, I know a lot of doctors are nice people, but would I have them operate on my heart? No. Okay. Uh, if you're a you know what do you do when you when you have major surgery, Sue? So you check the person's right. credentials. You don't care whether he's Democrat, Republican, black, pink, orange. You check your credentials. So your statement about checking the facts is so important. We're hoping and praying that people check the facts this year because it affects our lives. Do you feel that way? Do I feel that people fact check? Yeah. Not always. And I believe that, I hate to gore your ox here, but television advertising has these 30-second sure, commercials. Exactly. about candidates yeah. and they may look one way in the commercial but they, it's they can make him look i think yeah. wolf has a great uh campaign i mean they make him look like he's saint tom tom wolf okay but when you're on a half hour show that's why i admire people like muser and shrin they come on the show they pay for it but they want people to know who they are okay they want people that's exactly right a third i can make anyone look fabulous in 30 seconds that's I mean, true I, seriously i can make them look like put the music in, put the kids in, have them hugging people, you know, this is wonderful, and oh my God, he's such a beautiful guy. He does nothing, you know, what are the facts? I mean, it's, that's, I get so, fr as you could tell, I get frustrated. Are so. you frustrated, Sam? Yeah, I get frustrated because hmm. I don't like, when, I don't like people lying to senior citizens and, and deceiving people. I believe, though, that senior citizens 
have life experience, therefore they know when they're being snowed. I'm sorry, they know it. They can smell it from a mile away. They you know, know all about right. it. You know, my mother, was, I said, when she was 87 years old, it was great. You know, uh, so what's the future look like for Sue Henry? Stay tuned. How's that one? <laughs> you like the little tease there, so, Sue? Yeah, I, I love it. You know, with Sue, I'll tell you what, to be on, in, in, in this business and be on radio three hours a day, okay, uh, I applaud you for that. You Thank know, you. And you gained a beautiful, wonderful reputation. Uh, you're, you come from a great family, and uh, no matter what your, your, your political points are, I have a liberal friend who I love, and we disagree all the time, but I love the guy, and he would do anything for me, and I would do anything for him. Well, that's what it's all and, about. Let me tell you, that's and, so when, and, we, and I tell him the same thing, no, 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 we, and, but it's a good argument. It doesn't mean, well, I, and we'll go out for dinner, and we'll have a good time, etc. and that's what I, I like to see people do. Let's argue on issues and fa uh, you know other than personalities. Anything you'd like to say in closing? Thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure. Uh, you're, pleasure you're, such a, you're such a fun host. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure of mine. Folks, Sue Henry, uh, stay tuned. You'll find out what's happening with Sue, and you'll be surprised. A lot of interesting things are in the making. We'll see you next time.